Okay, we are now recording. I call to order the meeting of the Green Bay Com Common Council for Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. Clerk? Robert present, Your Honor. Thank you, we have a quorum and we will proceed. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, to be just. Now, before we move to the invocation, uh, I just want to introduce Pastor Rachel Kanoki from Trinity Lutheran. Really appreciate her making some time um, to join us this evening. Uh, my family and I have had the privilege of attending a few services over at Trinity Lutheran and have always really appreciated um, the sermons that have been offered. And um, you know, no disrespect to any of um, the priests from my wife's childhood who might be on the Zoom tonight, but after, um, after witnessing the sermon that uh, Pastor Rachel offered, um, not this past Easter, but the previous one, uh, Emily said it was the best sermon she'd ever heard. So, uh, so really lucky to have Rachel joining us tonight to offer the invocation, which um, I think is for a, a pretty important meeting, hoping that we'll be able to advance the Equal Rights Ordinance and wanted to have Pastor Rachel here as somebody who is obviously a member of the faith community, uh, but also a, a real advocate um, for social justice and equal rights in our city here. So with that, we'd like to pass the mic uh, to Pastor Rachel Kenoki from Trinity Lutheran. Pastor. Thank you so much for having me and for the invitation. And uh, Mayor, I don't appreciate you setting the bar quite so high, but <laughs> we do gather tonight and I would invite you to just take a moment and pray with me. So I do pray that the Lord would be with you. Gracious God, we thank you for your gift of vocation and especially for all of these men and women who have answered your call to serve their community and public leadership. We know that no matter our background, our story, we are all equal before you because we are equally imperfect. We each come with our own ideas of goodness, our own convictions of right, our own insistence that our way is the way. We'd ask that you would soften our arrogance and crack open our stubborn hearts Open our eyes to see your vision for who we could be. Remind us that there is more to choosing good than just hating evil, more to being faithful than just standing still. Give us all the courage we need to take each next step. And if we err, let us err on the side of grace, on the side of justice, on the side of love, until the world that we live in isn't a reflection of us, but of you. Give us the strength and patience to work for the day when each hungry child, every lonely elder, every beautiful child wondering if they belong knows that there is a place at the table for them. Lord, this is not our world, it is yours. Keep us humble in the work you've set before us. So we might keep growing in, into the people that you are calling us to be. In your loving name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Now we are on to approval of the minutes. Move to approve. I get okay. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve the minutes from the October 6, 2020 meeting. Uh, any corrections? Seeing no requests, all in favor, if I was saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have it. Approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Any changes to be made? Mayor? Yes, Alder Johnson. Um, I, I emailed Chief of Staff Jeffries on this, and I think she was checking into it. Um, but the, the Landmarks Commission report is missing from the agenda, but it was actually included in the agenda packet on the website. So I'm just curious if we're supposed to be taking that report up tonight or not. Very good. Chief of Staff Jeffries? Yes, I had actually asked um, our planner, Stephanie Hummel, to address the issue since I, she was the one who actually is managing that um, report. 
and uh, I couldn't see what Alder Johnson saw in um, from my end. So uh, unfortunately, I could not see where that report was mistakenly placed. Sure, it, it was published on, on the website uh, agenda packet. And, it, and I think because it's not on the agenda, I presume it's a moot point if it's not been published and that it would be taken up at the next meeting, but I was just looking to maybe get some clarity on that before we proceeded. This is Attorney Travis, that is correct. So we'll just okay. address it at our next meeting. Attorney Chavez, we can just take it up at our next meeting? Yeah, so it would just be item included in the packet. There's nothing to do unless it's on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Mayor? Uh, Alder Lefebvre on the agenda. Um, may, may I just make a quick suggestion for Alder Johnson? Uh, it's really hard sometimes to hear what he's saying because it's such an echo that he should get a headset that he can plug into his computer. It'll it'll keep that echoing down, I believe. Okay. Thanks, Alder. So we do have uh, a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of adopting the agenda will signify by saying aye. 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 Was name? Aye. Yes. Yeah, have it. The agenda has been approved. On to report by the mayor. Just a couple of things to touch on tonight. Um, first, just wanted to let you all know that I will be doing a little bit of um, a budget uh, open house. Um, did that last year and was able to do it in person on the east side and the west side. Um, because we're living in COVID times, I'll be doing it virtually, um, but planning to do it uh, Thursday, October 29th. We'll be sure to send all that information to Alders um, so you can attend or, uh, or watch the recording of it. Um, and obviously inviting members of the public um, to participate and um, and sit through that presentation. So details will be forthcoming on that, but just wanted to put a pin in that date for you all. And then of course we have a meeting of our joint uh, personnel and finance meeting on November 2nd um, to take up the budget and then uh, final adoption by our common council wow. will take place on November 10th. Just want to note that for the public as well. Um, also just wanted to do a little bit of an update on voting in the city of Green Bay. Today we had our our first day of early in-person voting. Um, don't have the final count as of 30, but late this afternoon, we had over 430 people who had voted in person here at City Hall today. Um, just to give you a sense for the total number of people that have voted um, in the city, that sits at uh, right around 18,000 um, ballots actually returned either in person or through the mail. Um, and, uh, and ballots requested sit at 26,000. Um, so ballots requested is about 46% of our registered electorate, which is a really strong number. So of course, just continuing to encourage people, if they've made that request for an absentee ballot um, to participate that way. Um, otherwise we have the early in-person option um, at City Hall here all week through Saturday, um, this week, and then again next week through Saturday. The only thing to note is on that final Saturday, it'll be just registered voters um, who will be able to, to vote um, in person early at City Hall. Um, of course, we always have um, same day registration at the polls on November 3rd. So if people are not uh, are not registered in time, they can always do that. Um, but just directing people to our, our website, feel free to um, log on and check out all the voting options we have available, encouraging um, all of our eligible citizenry to participate in this uh, this election of utmost importance. So with that, I will move along to announcements. Any announcements? Mayor? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'll do Lefebvre, point taken. I'll, I'll look into the microwave uh, to the microphone, sorry if it's a, a bad audio connection tonight. Um, but since it, I anticipate that we may not pull the item later, I wanted to uh, commend Chief Smith um, on the agenda item talking about the increase in gun violence in our community. Um, I appreciate the fact that he's already put together a task force um, that he's, he's identified, you know, sort of the, the, the challenge and the problem that we have in our community. He's, he's 
many stakeholders. And so I just wanted to at least take an opportunity recognizing that we may not have it later uh, to thank the chief for, for swiftly responding um, to obviously that concern that has been raised in our community. And we appreciate everything that our police department does to, to keep our neighborhood safe. So thank you, chief. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> thank you, Alder. Uh, additional announcements. Alder Stoyer. Alder Stoyer, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to read this a little bit. Uh, the local Salvation Army has teamed up with Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin. Attention, stock the shelves, 29 Drive, Appleton, Wisconsin, on food banks. A campaign is on from October 1st to October 31st to collect monetary donations. Five million has been raised since 2010. Other area pantries that could use donations are the Pulaski Community Pantry, Sturgeon Bay's Lakeland CAP, the Golden House in Green Bay, and the Green Bay Assembly of God Food Pantry in my District 10. Pastor Matt Miller there stated that they have handed out more than 10,000 bags of food and performed nearly 1,200 deliveries since March. They are in acute need of freezer space and refrigerated space. Their address is 1460 Shawano Avenue, Green Bay 54303, 497 2800. Any help that can be brought forward during this tough time would be appreciated. Thank you. Thanks for that announcement. Any others? I, real quick, Mayor. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just wanted to extend condolences to Alderman Vanderlees and the loss of his brother. Roger Vanderlees, as many of you are aware, served the city of Green Bay and other community groups for many decades. Uh, the Vanderlees name is very well known. No one has served their city well through the years. And I don't know if it all started with Roger, but he certainly had a part in that. So my sincere condolences to you, John, uh, as you grieve. And thank you to your brother for years of service to the city of Green Bay. Thank you for that, Alder Burnett. I certainly would pass along all of our condolences to the Vanderlees family. Mayor? Yes, Chief um, Jeff Jeffrey. I'm going to mute everybody. I, I seem to be getting some interference, so I just want to make sure it's not our system. Just give me one moment. Oh, yeah. That unfortunately, that is that must be something in our system. I'll I'll talk to um, uh, Director Mon Ronick. Thank you. All right, are we good to proceed, Ms. Jeffries? Yes, we are. I needed to unmute myself. Yes, we are ready to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, seeing no other announcements, we'll move along to recognitions and awards. Uh, an award to recognize here, uh, City of Green Bay received the American Public Works Association Project of the Year 2020 for the Webster Avenue reconstruction. Um, so just wanted to recognize the great work done by Steve Grenier, director of our Department of Public Works, the entire team um, who is associated with that project within our department here in the City of Green Bay and AIRS associates as well and, and their entire team who contributed to that effort. Um, obviously a fantastic project from our perspective, um, but pretty meaningful to be recognized by the American Public Works Association. Um, so sincerest congratulations to, as I said, uh, Director Grenier, our employees within DPW and, and all those at AIRS and associates. Uh, Director Grenier, any thoughts from you on the award? Uh, thanks, Mayor. It seems almost unbelievable to think that it was 13 years ago when I came to the city uh, in 2007 that I was handed a concept plan and uh, one of the worst streets in, in the entire city. And over the past 13 years, we've been able to see that concept plan uh, go from a pipe dream to, to fruition on the, on the northeast side and really serve as a gateway project. So again, thank you for... Uh, uh, for mentioning this in front of the Common Council. Uh, many people on the staff uh, and our consultant uh, partners at AIRS Associates for helping make that dream a reality. 
Uh, and I'd like to take some time uh, very quickly to recognize one of the individuals when we had the ribbon cutting ceremony out there uh, last fall, I did recognize Tom Giese, who's our uh, right of way specialist. Uh, Tom's been with the city for over 30 years and he's been instrumental in every major project we've done. <clears throat> and I feel comfortable in saying that he was probably the linchpin on this project as well. Uh, the project simply wouldn't have happened without all the effort uh, and time that Tom put into it to work with the property owners. We had 24 full acquisitions of property out there and well over 80 individual property interests that needed to be acquired. So Tom put a, a lot of effort into this uh, and I wanted to make sure that we did recognize him specifically for his efforts. But uh, very proud, very happy with the, with the outcome of the project. I think everyone's been pleased. Uh, and nobody's losing fillings coming in from the northeast side anymore. So that's a good thing. That is a very good thing. Well, thank you for that, Director Grenier. It's also my understanding that Tom is never is not ever permitted to retire. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what we keep trying to we keep trying to say, and he keeps threatening. So uh, I, I do believe it's in the not too distant future, but not imminent. Good to hear. Well, very good. Congratulations again, and thanks to Department of Public Works and and Ayers Associates for that great work. Um, with that, we will move on to appointments. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to confirm the new appointments. Any discussion? All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it. Those appointments have been approved. Reappointments. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Any discussion on reappointments? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it, and those reappointments are made. Under ordinance, a second reading for adoption. You may under suspension of the rules take up items one through seven with a roll call vote. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion made to suspend the rules. Made by Alder Dorsey. Like to take up number four separately? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. we can certainly do that. Uh, Alder Dorf, would you like to uh, to change that motion? Sure. I move to um, approve items. I mean, move to for items. Um, all the items except number four. Second. Seconded by Alder Corpus Tax. All in favor of that motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it, the rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. That's to adopt all of those items with the exception of item four. Please use the board. I vote aye. Thank you. And those are adopted 12 0. On to item K4. Motion to adopt. Second. Second. Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Any discussion? Uh, number four, I'd like to speak on that. Yeah, Alder Vanderlees, go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to know what the city of Green Bay is going to do as far as educating the public, as far as uh, to stop discrimination. Uh, are we just going to put the ordinance in effect and, and have no uh, educational drive as far as to, to stop uh, discrimination, things like that, uh, as far as in the housing and in uh, uh, treatment of people of human rights? What, what is the city going to be doing as far as educating the people? public i'd like to know that yeah i could speak to a little bit alder if if you'd like thank you you bet well i yeah i can just address it um by saying that i think a really important piece of our ordinance is is the creation of the equal rights commission which will be populated by 
eight citizen members plus one alder who will be serving on the commission. Um, and an important duty of the commission is to communicate both with my office, with our common council, and with the, the public at large um, on these, these issues. So I think that's gonna be an important role for them to play, uh, certainly as an educational one, on the status of, uh, of non-discrimination here in the city of Green Bay and, and different things that we can, we can address. Um, you know, I, I think your point's well taken. Uh, I, I know that there is, as a result of this conversation, um, there are a couple alders who are gonna be engaged with um, you know, the, the landlord community here in Green Bay, Alder Stevens and Alder Stoyer. I think that's an opportunity for, for some education as well. Um, so those are two points that I would make. Uh, Alder Dorf as the author, uh, I would go uh, to you as well. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Yes, I, I certainly think that um, being uh, that we are city council, we certainly can lead by and so this ordinance will be one um, step in that direction, um, us leading by example and supporting the different groups and, and putting um, our stamp of approval on treating all equally. I know that as uh, formerly part of the school district, there are many educational opportunities um, through the school system for the students and parents. There's many different things um, that students do, clubs, diversity clubs, LGBTQ um, clubs. Um, so, so our kids are probably far ahead of us and maybe they can be asked once this COVID is over to to help us with the spreading more of the education, you know, and I think we as alders might need education. So, you know, I look forward to perhaps having um, discussions here at City Hall or, or staff developments, as we called them when I was in education and, and learning about these things. I, I, I feel that we'll be able to move forward on this and that our community will welcome the education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could we use the board on that, please, Mayor? Yeah. Mayor, any, any additional comments? Yeah, Mayor? Yeah, Mayor? Go ahead. I'd like to open the floor for interested parties uh, to speak on this. Second. Motion made to open the floor by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, the floor is open. Please just state your name and address. Uh, for the council before beginning with your comments. Can I speak? This is David Bartakovsky, uh, 2697 Bay Settlement Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 5430. I just want, I just, I would just like to make a comment and applaud you guys for, um, putting in place a, uh, a committee that's going to listen to this and interact with the local government and the police, I hope, as well. Uh, I think in, in saving grace, uh, you know, I, I'm uh, lucky to have six children, very young, and, uh, and I think they're our future. They, 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 uh, they think a lot uh, more so fairly in, equality and things of that nature. So I think we're on the right right track with our young people. And and I applaud you guys for uh, taking action and implementing a uh, committee like this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bartikovsky. Any other members of the public? Mayor, we have Edward who's raised his hand. Edward, can you please uh, thank you unmuted yourself, state your first and last name for the committee and your address. Yes, I'm Edward Jensen. I live at 541 Alpine Drive in Green Bay. Now I wrote to Alder Dorf and Alder Corpus Dax and Alder Weary and also the mayor's office with some specific questions about this ordinance and I've yet to hear anything back. Uh, and I don't know if any of them are prepared to answer any of those questions tonight, but I, I thought it's kind of unusual that you ask a elected official and you don't receive a response. I'm not disappointed enough. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Any other members of the public? 
Uh, yes, Mayor, we have Melissa decker Cheslock. Uh, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the committee. Melissa decker Cheslock, PO Box 8982, Green Bay 54308. I want to thank you, Mayor and Alders. Um, earlier today, I don't know if you had the opportunity opportunity to read it, but I sent out an email to all of you and I included a video link to uh, WBAY um, story by Aisha uh, Morales regarding children who are students in the school uh, in the school district here who have been experiencing many of the same things I experienced over 35 years ago. Um, long story short, there's nothing to be afraid of. What we're asking for is for the same thing that most everybody else has. We want to be seen as humans. We want to be respected and treated with dignity. We're not asking for any more rights than what each and every one of you has. We just want to be able to enjoy our, our rights and be able to live like you do without fear of discrimination, racism, or any type of um, hate. And even though I've been talking about my own experiences as a black child and uh, young adult growing up here, it, I would be remiss in not including um, my brothers and sisters and people who do not identify as any gender, people of the LGBTQ plus community. I know last time there were some uh, comments made and I don't, which I don't understand. It shouldn't matter what your body parts are. It shouldn't matter how you identify. What should matter is that you, as a human being, as I stated earlier, deserve the same respect and dignity that everybody else has. We're not saying that you can't have your prejudices. Everybody has bias. And what we're saying and asking for is that you don't act with those um, with the discrimination and with those biases in mind. And with that, I'd like to thank you, and I hope that each and every one of you votes in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cheslock. Uh, next, we have uh, Corey King. Mr. King, please unmute yourself, state your name and address for the committee. For the council, sorry. Dr. Corey King, 401 North Washington Street, Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, 54301. I am the vice chancellor for university inclusivity and student affairs at the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. I am here tonight once again to speak on behalf of Chancellor Alexander and the university in supporting the passage of this ordinance. We believe that the Green Bay City has an opportunity once again to be a leader in our state in terms of inclusivity and diversity and equity and send a clear message to everyone that we are a community that believes that everyone should be treated equally in the eyes of each other and our society. So we support Alder Dorf in this endeavor. We support the mayor and the council and applaud you in your consideration of this very important ordinance. The impact to our faculty, our staff, and our students who are part of the community is paramount. And we join you, the council and the city in this celebration of an opportunity of inclusivity, diversity, and equity. And with the passage, our hope, we will join the city in educating anyone about this ordinance and about the importance of inclusivity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. King. Next, we have Kelly. Kelly, please unmute yourself. Give your first and last name for the committee. Sorry for the council and also your address. My name is Kelly Delvo, and my address is 17 Chapel View in Green Bay. Um, I just want to thank everybody who has been in support 
of this. And I really feel as leaders in our community, um, it's your duty to make sure that everyone in our community is inclusive and, and has equity. Um, I understand that there may be some personal or religious biases that make you uncomfortable. However, I would ask that as an elected official, you look at it, at it from the standpoint of this is becoming a much more diverse community compared to 30 years ago. And we need to embrace everybody who is part of this community and love them for who they are. And I'm really hoping that with the passage of this, we will make some steps forward. I believe the committee will be an amazing asset. And I love the idea of having training at the leadership level as well to help foster that understanding of what a community that is inclusive and equitable can look like. And I truly believe it would make Green Bay just a wonderful, wonderful place if everybody can embrace that. So I'm really hopeful that this passes tonight with everybody voting yes. Thank you, Ms. Delvo. Next, we have Gooseyhead Abby. Uh, Ms. Abby, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Abby Ringel, uh, address is 2042 Memorial Drive. And I just want to thank um, the mayor and the city council for essentially putting into the city code that everyone in this city is included. Everyone in this city matters and it, giving a voice um, to maybe people who don't look like us or sound like us or identify like us and I'm just very encouraged um, that you know the majority of the council has um, has spoken in favor of this and, and everyone on the council to vote in favor and show that you too would like to see Green Bay be the diverse robust community that we all know it is thank you thank you Ms. Ringle Okay, Mayor, I don't have anyone else who's raised their hand in Zoom using that feature. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Anyone else wishing to speak? That I'll entertain a motion to close the floor. To close the floor. Second. Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach to close the floor. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Any additional comments from council on item K4? Seeing none, we will use the board. My board's not working again. I'll vote aye. Elder. I'm afraid mine's not working either, and I vote aye. Thanks, Elder. And that is adopted nine to three. Very good, congratulations, Alder Dorf. We're on to the Redevelopment Authority. Move to approve. Second. Second. Made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Galvin to approve report L, which is the report of the Redevelopment Authority from the meeting on October 13, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Number three. Item three, any others? Mayor? Yes. I just need to be recorded as abstaining on item number four as my employer is, is one of the beneficiaries of that allocation. Okay, very good, that will be noted. Any other items to be handled separately? 
Item three will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. If you guys have it, the report has been approved with the exception of item three. You wish Second. Second. Who made the motion there? Right. Alder Scannell. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. The item was pulled by Alder Weary. You have the floor, hey. Alder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciated that Director uh, Renier Wig uh, giving me information by email. That, that helped a great deal. <clears throat> I just had a follow up question, more of a clarification. Uh, this money is going to be pulled with previous money, and uh, some RFPs, I believe, are being sent out uh, for a plan on, on how to proceed. And that will go back to RDA. Will that again come to council? I don't think it would come back to council unless you'd request that it would come back to council. Normally, normally the council would approve that and then the RDA would handle the RFP and the approvals. My concern would be that we don't get any input on, on what plan is actually selected. We're setting money aside, but we have no idea what it's going to be used for. Does that, does that make sense? You know? <laughs> It does. It's right. Um, the RFP is for homelessness issues pertaining to persons um, with COVID and the issues with COVID. I suspect we'll get a number of applications for that. But and then we would go through the ranking process. But okay. like what type of groups do you think are like existing groups within the city or I'm just... they, they need to be providing services within the city. Um, okay. There are a number of housing agencies that are dealing with COVID and homelessness. So I would I would suspect a number of them would be applying okay. for these funds. And this is a more of a short term addressing of an issue. This isn't putting in something place long term. Well, it, would, it depends what the proposal is. I mean, I guess you'd have to define long term. I mean, it might be a program that lasts six months or three months. I mean, I don't know what would come in, but long term, I guess, yeah, multiple years are permanent. Usually permanent. not multiple years because the money doesn't last that long. Okay. All right, well, I appreciate appreciate the answers, Cheryl. Yep. Any further comments? Uh, I would make a motion to send their their vote to city council for final approval. I second that. Motion made I, by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Brunette. Um, it's a pretty important issue, and uh, I think this is something the city council should should weigh in on. I mean, we can all see know the effects of what's going on with COVID and I mean heck driving downtown you drive by uh, uh, the park right by the church uh, St. John's Park and you're wondering you know people ask what the heck's going on down there and obviously it needs to be addressed so I think we need to stay on top of this and, and put our voices in as well so I would hope this can come back so we can weigh in on it. All right we do have a motion and a second um, to send the uh the contract awardees, the RFP awardees, back through council when those have been made. Uh, additional comments from council? Um, Mayor. Alder Lefebvre and then Alder Dorf. Um, yes, I just want to know, is this timely? That's it. Always going to say it's timely. <laughs> Well, it, it is, it's timely. It's homelessness and COVID. So we want to get the money out the door as fast as we can. Um, so to come back to the council would be when? Well, the RDA meets on November 10th. Um, so it would be the council meeting after that, I would suspect. Do you think that, that it can wait that long? <laughs> um, I I have faith that the RDA will make good decisions with the funding, but it you know you guys are the council members. If you want this to come back, that's your decision. Um, generally, block grant funds are you approve the master plan for block grant, block grant and COVID block grant. You send that to the redevelopment authority, and then they run the programs based on your recommendations on these funding levels. That's been the SOP. It's, so is it easier and faster for us to get the money out the door for the RDA to approve it and not have to come back a week later for council? Yes, if that's what you're asking me. Yeah, yeah. For the council itself, it's three weeks, and then it's not going to go right. Then it takes a little bit after that, right? 
Will it be the first council meeting after the November 10th RDA meeting? Right, yeah. So. Oh, okay, thank you. And then, so that's not actually until early December, our next mm -hmm. council meeting. That yes, that one is December 1st, and the one after that is December 15th. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Jeffries. Uh, Alder Dorf. Thank you. Um, I, I really feel I'm going to have to vote against this motion. Um, I would invite the alders to come to RDA. I know that I'm on RDA, so of course I'm going to be in the position of being able to vote on this, and, and you, you may not be, depending on how this ends up. But this is timely. And this is going to, to stall the efforts to support members of our community that need help at this time. And um, Director Grenier, I, sorry, Rainier Wig, Director Rainier Wig, is there um, a time that the money has to be spent by or it has well, to be encumbered or distributed by? We don't have a deadline that would supersede this council meeting that we're talking about. But I guess the bottom line is we want the money out the door. right? as fast as we can. So it's providing services to homelessness. Thank you. And so all of you are very welcome to come to the RDA meeting on, on the 10th of November. Um, you can zoom in on it. You can share your opinions. You can talk. You can be in closed session if we go into closed session. So I would ask that you vote against this if, if you and, and instead come to the meeting and share your opinions there. And I will be voting no. Thank you. Alder Galvin. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've been dealing with uh, the issue at St. John's Park that Alder Weary uh, referenced to uh, because I have a very close friend and he's been in communication with me since this spring about some of the ongoing problems there. I was at a meeting uh, hosted by the Green Bay Police Department earlier this week. Um, these funds, and uh, uh, Director uh, Rainer Wig, if I understand correctly, these funds would be used to house um, homeless people who are unable to find a, a roof over their head or because of COVID are unable to find a roof over their head. Is that correct? Potentially. I mean, you could also apply for these funds um, for, you know, anything like cleaning supplies that could be uh, essential um, services to homeless folks, whether it's food, um, could be shelter. Okay. And, and what I'm hearing at the meeting and in, in conversation, Department and some of the other uh, NGOs that are involved with this is that because of COVID especially, there isn't that much room at the end, unfortunately. And many of these individuals that are having to live out on the street, we've seen the uh, photos on social media of some of the tents. Um, we might have, some of you, like I, have probably fielded some complaints from concerned citizens. Um, and, and what these funds do, it is allows us to um, help these people transition off the street during the cold winter months that uh, my brother's out in Minneapolis know this afternoon. Uh, it's coming, winter is coming, okay? And and the sooner we can get these individuals uh, in a safe and secure place uh, where, where they can get a, a, a roof, a bed, a meal, whatever services they need, or these organizations out there that are already caring for them can have these funds to help them with PPE and cleaning and, and some of the other things that go along with this, uh, the sooner the better. And, and the RDA has been dealing with this already. Um, so I, I'm, I understand the need for oversight, uh, I do. But I, I think at this point, we've already um, given uh, our trust um, to the RDA to make this and how these funds prior to this have been spent. And I don't see um, a concern, at least I don't have a concern right now that these funds would be misspent. I think all this is gonna do is further what they've already been trying to do and get these individuals out of the cold and off the streets and allow some of these organizations that have been helping them to do so um, in a clean and safe manner. So I'm, I'm not really in favor of this either uh, at, at this time. Thank you. Dr. Gerlach. Thank you. Um, I'm inclined not to support this either for two reasons. One is that, as uh, Alder Galvin just said, I'm really interested in, uh, with winter approaching, getting homes for people as quickly as possible. And the other reason is that I have been attending the RDA meetings, and I have been so impressed with the thoughtfulness and the professionalism of that group. 
um, that I really do trust them. I, I, I say that with sincerity, but, but I also am always concerned that I might be missing something in making a decision. And I just wondered if I might ask, why would, I, I, this would probably be a question of Alder Weary if I would be allowed to do that. I don't understand why he would want it to come back to the council. What, would, what is the concern? May I ask? Alder Weary? Well, certainly. Um, I think as we all know, our DA of course meets during the day and those of us who are still working, unless you spend vacation, you're not really gonna make an RDA meeting. And that's unfortunate. I've, I've always said they should meet at night, maybe something, Mr. Mayor, you could consider to get more participation from the public. Um, for something as big of an issue as, as this, I mean, we've debated different homeless programs since I've been on council almost 20 years now, and some are good ideas, some are bad ideas. And everybody in our district has, a good, has an idea on, on it. Um, to such an important decision. Um, I don't want to give up my vote to pretty much a board of unelected people as well-meaning and as good as they may be. This is something I want to vote on, that's all. Thank you. Alder Gerlach, any further questions? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments from council on the motion? Oh. Yeah. Alder Burnett, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. For the council members who may be on the fence you know, regarding the timing, that would be my big concern, the timing. If RDA meets the first few weeks of November and the next council meeting is December 1st or whatever the mayor mentioned, I can see that that would be a big deterrent to voting to allow RDA. So as city council president, I just want you all to know that I would authorize a, an emergency meeting if, if that's something that, that would be deemed necessary amongst this group because I agree we, we need the, the homeless need the any help that they can get any organization that can assist you know should get the funding as quickly as possible and it's not so much that we don't trust the RDA they are in fact mostly unelected and not that that means that they're not they don't have a devotion to the public like we do because that's not true but a lot of times when we hear a lot of the community conversations regarding homelessness and struggles that we have within our districts, I think we all could lend, you know, very good uh, oversight to how the funds are being spent so that we can ensure that, that all people in the community who we may have personal, you know, interactions or have knowledge of that they in fact are also considered. So I can, I can see us going either way, quite frankly. Um, but but I want to get the money in the hands of qualified organizations to assist as many people as possible as quickly as possible. I do respect the desire for oversight, oversight as well. So thank you. Those are my comments. Thanks, Alder. Any further comments? Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe uh, there's someone from the public who'd like to speak. So I'd like to make a motion to open the floor. Second. Alder Scannell makes a motion to open the floor. It's been seconded by Alder. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have it. The floor is open. Uh, I'd like to speak, David Bartakovsky. Do I need to do my address once again? Yes, please. All right, that's 2697 Bay Settlement Road, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54311. Um, this is very clo close and dear to my heart. I was on the Green Bay Homeless Task Force for a number of years trying to get the MICA Center open, and it, uh, we had succeeded uh, to get a daytime resource center open. Uh, but I'm going to give you a, an example here. A couple of months ago, it was a very cold um, evening, and I ran into a gentleman on the Riverwalk, and and he's wearing shorts and it was probably 35, 40 degrees, I think. Uh, uh, and this could have been even uh, six months ago. I don't remember the reference, but I ran into this person and he was sitting on a bench and it was extremely cold and he was in shorts. So I went on my walk, came back. And because I have a very, uh, I'm very opinionated when it comes to homeless, I'm very proactive. I stopped and I said, you know, where are you going tonight? He said, uh, I have nowhere to go. So I said, uh, well, hold off and uh, I'm going to take you somewhere for the evening. This was back in, uh, uh, I think it was back in April or yeah, I think it was April because it was still pretty cold out. And um, 
there was a police officer coming my way and I flagged him down and he totally ignored me and kept on going. So I went and got my vehicle, came back to get Jonathan and drove him over to the St. John's homeless shelter and they had turned him away uh, because of the COVID. And I had no other resources. I wasn't gonna let him sit out there and freeze. They handed, although uh, they did they did hand him some blankets to cover himself with and sleep outside with, but I, I didn't think that was quite adequate and it's not adequate. So I took him over to the Cherry Motel and I paid for three nights and gave him some money for food and he was very appreciative, but that was just a temporary uh, arrangement there. And uh, I, I've experienced this day in and day out, uh, this homeless issue. And I think it's important that we get funding quickly. I think, it's, I think uh, history is gonna judge us on how we actually treat each other and take care of each other. Uh, that, and that's very clear, that we need to make these, uh, these important decisions and make them quickly. And you know, er money is fr frivolously spent on a lot of things uh, in other areas as well not only in, you know, in government, but privately as well, businesses and such. You know, accounting for every dime and nickel, I think is short-sighted. I think we need to uh, approve this immediately. Uh, we, are in a, we are in a very uh, difficult time in the history of our country here. We are dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with homelessness. I see I only got two seconds left here, but, uh, but I think it's extremely important that we make uh, we make the right decisions at the right time and not continue to delay these things. It's very important that we, like I said, we, that we're actually judged on how we take care of each other. That's how, that's how they're going to judge society. Thank you, Mr. Bodakovsky. I appreciate, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, Mayor, next we have Kelly who would like to speak. I believe, uh, Kelly, um, had spoken before. I had, thank okay. you. Um, Kelly Delvo, 716 Chapel View Road in Green Bay. Um, <clears throat> I have been to the park that was mentioned across from St. John's. Um, I and several friends of mine brought supplies down one day and returned later with a hot meal that someone had prepared, blankets. Um, there is a crisis down there. There was a woman down there who is diabetic and had no way to get to the pharmacy to pick up her insulin, which is a life crisis. Um, without the proper medication, she could die. Um, there were probably between that place and under the viaduct where the tents are at least 20 people. And because of COVID, they have no place to go. And with the temperatures dropping the way they are, the longer this is delayed, People are going to have catastrophic health issues if we wait. Um, it's not an issue that's going away. I trust these nonprofits and services in our community that do this on a daily basis to make the right decisions. These are not people who are going to frivolously spend the money. Um, they are there with a purpose. They are there to help these people in our community. There's also issues with mental health down there. Um, there are definitely some people who are mentally ill and could use the services. And I've worked in that field and I am able to recognize the signs and symptoms. And I have, I have concerns with the safety um, of all the people down there with regard to sexual assault, with regard to hunger, um, the temperatures, COVID, there's so many issues. And if we can't trust the people in our community who have taken this up as something they are passionate about, then that says a lot about our community. And I agree with what the gentleman said before me, how we take care of the most vulnerable people in our society speaks to who we as a community. And these people need our help. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delvo. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to the council on this matter? Please. Yeah, I'd like to speak, please. Yes, please uh, state your name and address for the committee, for the council. Uh, Jerry Bigelow, 1216 Buchanan Street, on this uh, homeless thing right now. 
Um, the landlords cannot do evictions between now and the first of the year. So I'm predicting around January 15th to February 15th, you're gonna have hundreds of people to deal with, hundreds, just in those six, seven weeks. Uh, you know, speaking per personally, you know, I, I, know, I know quite a few that are gonna have to leave and they're not gonna be able to get places. So you're gonna have a real big problem between January and February when they can do the evictions. Because when, uh, when they said they didn't have to pay their rent, a lot of people take it literally, you know? That's all I got to say. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to this matter? Please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Anyone else? Thank you, Mayor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Okay. Okay, second. Second about story. Close the floor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Name. Mayor, can I make a comment? <clears throat> um, did you recognize me? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> yep, I did. Okay. Um, I just wanted to point out that I got a number today because um, I know we're talking about, you know, um, it seems like homeless um, individuals right now, but um, according to the Green Bay School District, we have 42 families that are in hotels right now and 10 families that are unsheltered through the district. So. These monies are not just for folks that are assisting individuals. I mean, agencies that are helping families as well are gonna be applying for these dollars, um, number one. And number two, I just want the council to know that we fully vet these organizations out when we run through the, the proposals that we receive. You know, they have to meet the requirements that HUD um, provides for us. And we make sure that, you know, we're, we're investing money in programs that are gonna work, so. Thank you. Just wanted to say That's that. That's a really good point, Director. And I would just, you know, mention as Director Rainier Wig said previously, um, these organizations obviously have to be providing services in the Green Bay community, Green Bay proper. Um, but in addition to that, I mean, we would expect the, um, you know, the well-known providers to step up and request assistance here. So the new community shelters of the world, of course, the St. John's, New Cap has been very active recently, um, you know, Transformation House has been very helpful. So I think, you know, like I said, it's it's kind of a tried and true group of providers who are gonna be able to put these these funds to use. Um, but I, I noticed that Alder Stoyer had his hand. Yeah, Thank you, Your Honor. Do I still have the floor? Do I? Or? Oh, I go ahead. Alder Stoyer. I don't, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, I, I raised my hand. Alder oh, Scannell, I don't know. Well, Alder Stoyer, then if I may. Yep, all the stories. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, the comments that Mr. Bartikowski made are spot on. I was with David on the committee for several years, you know, trying to get this resource center. And some of the roadblocks that we hit were amazing. You know, Alder Burnett was also involved in that. So, you know, if you go on a homeless count, that I did a couple of times, you know, it kind of opens your eyes as far as who has and who has not. You know, I appreciate all the worry bringing up this, you know, as far as being transparent and such, and, and we need to weigh in, but I think the timing, as all the Burnett said, is the best right now. So um, I, I mimic or, or go along with what Mr. Bartikowski said, that was spot on, and I agree with that, and I will not support this as well. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell? Uh, yes, just we routinely make decisions and then staff carries them out or whoever. I mean, that's pretty much the norm, actually. It, 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 it's not so much oversight. I see this as micromanaging, uh, and I just don't see the need for it. Um, and especially on this issue, it is very timely. So uh, I also don't support it. Mayor, I'd like to make one comment. Alder Vanderlees. Alder Vanderlees. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I, I recommend that we spend the money, let them spend the money and, uh, you know, help the homeless, help the people that need it. And I, I think I would just solve the problem and be that after they, you know, used up the 136,000, it's not that much money. Just kind of let the council know what it was, what it was actually used for. And, and that way we can 
we can have a, a an informational part of it of what the money was spent for. And and I think that'd be a very simple solution. And, and you know, whatever we can do to help the people right now, let's get it done. And, uh, you know, give us a little update what the money was actually had allocated for. And that would be sufficient for me. Thank you. Okay, absolutely. Any final comments? Mr. Mayor. With that, we have a second. Mr. Or, Mayor. Yeah, Alder Weary for a second time. I appreciate all the, all the comments by everybody, and I'm going to withdraw my motion. I think on this one, uh, with all that's going on, uh, this is something we can we can get a report after and and just move move ahead with this one. We have enough other things to to worry about. Okay, thank you, Alder Weary. So with that, we do have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, and the motion is approved to improvement in services. Motion well, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve Report M, which is the Report of the Improvement in Services Committee from the meeting on October 14, 2020. Any items to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Protection and policy. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to approve report N, which is the report of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meeting on October 12, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it, the report has been approved. Granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Second. 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 <laughs> Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Yeah, I'd like so, to abstain from Scott Van Edestein as far as I, I know who he is, so I would abstain from that. Thank you. Very good. That is noted. Any other abstentions? Any names to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please take by saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have it. Report has been approved, noting that abstention. Plan Commission. Motion to approve. Second. Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report P, which is the report of the Plan Commission from the meeting on, on October 12, 2020. Any items to be handled separately? Number two. Number. Number. number what number is it? Number two. And number no. six. Thank you. And six. Any others? Items two and six will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of items two and six. Your wishes on item two. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. This item was pulled by a couple of alders, but I'm going to go to Alder Corpus Dax as she is um, a member of the Planning Commission. Yes, I would like a make, to make a motion to send this back to Planning Commission due to submissions of additional information that were not presented last at last week's Planning Commission. Second. That would be my motion. Second. Second. Um, motion to refer back, made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Dorf. Any further comments? question yeah, if I could mayor ahead. yeah I am, I'm fairly familiar with this based on watching the, the meetings and whatnot uh, if we refer this back I don't know who could answer this but will it impact this person's business at all is it going to be harmed in the short term yeah just once yeah that's a good question um director Rainier Wig either you or uh, or mr. Buck if, yes, if I think Dave Buck is is with me tonight if you okay. can, I don't know if he can answer that question, but <laughs> right, maybe just, Mr. Buck, if you could just speak to um, to why we would want to refer this back at this time. Sure, we did receive some additional information um, that the plan commission was not privy to, that uh, staff believes is relevant to the to the petition. As far as impacting the business, this is a conditional use permit request, so they are currently operating. A material recovery business this is to expand that use into a new use so 
though I can't speak for them, I, I don't believe it would impact their business uh, business model to hold it. Okay, thank you. I would also like to add that part of our, um, one of the conditions that was added last week was that the CUP couldn't be used until all of the conditions have been met. So it wouldn't be impacting anything already standing. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Elder. So we do have a motion and a second to refer this back to committee. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The item has been referred back to the plan commission. Item six. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve. The item was pulled by Alder Corpus Dax. You have the floor. Um, this one, I make a motion to hold for 90 days to allow the applicant time to address easement and ordinance um, questions that uh, were brought up at last night's zoning board meeting. Second. Second. It has been made to hold for 90 days by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any comments from the department necessary on this? We have someone from the David, public though. Uh, David Buck, do we, I mean, that would be okay for the 90 day hold, I think, right? Sure, the, the 90, again, I don't know if it'll affect the petitioner at all, but a 90 day hold would be fine. This is a multifaceted uh, petition that needs uh, both the conditional use approval for the use itself and some dimensional um, regulation variances from the Board of Appeals. So it, it is multifaceted. Could this come back sooner if those were if those issues were worked out? Or would it have to be held for 90 days? Are you asking me? <laughs> I'm asking um, David as a planner or Vanessa, is there an, if you hold it for 90, let's say that everybody works things out before 90 days. I mean, we wouldn't want to hold that up longer, would we? Or You can, if, if, if the intent is to um, just do it until they actually get those items rectified, you can hold for 90 days um, and bring it back sooner if, if it's ready. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, all of the favor. Um, there is, I know there's one person for sure that wants to speak on this item. Could we open the floor? Absolutely. I'll make a motion to open the floor. Okay. Second. Second. Lula Fave, second by Alder Stoyer to open the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have it, the floor is open. Okay. My name's Drew. Oh, I'm sorry. Go sorry. ahead. Yeah, this is, uh, go ahead. Well, you can go first. Go on. Uh, Jerry Bigelow, 1260 Buchanan. I own some of the property alongside of it. And uh, I've been listening to the meetings and been trying to communicate with people. And I tell them there's a six foot fence in a 10 foot hole. I tell them they're putting the six foot fence for a 30 foot of stuff. This Steve Garner. Ron. Mr. Mr. Bigelow? Yes. We're, not dis we're discussing a different item. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, uh, Mr. Bartokowski. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to need more than three minutes to uh, present my case on this. Um, shut the door there; it's getting noisy out there. Sorry. So I'm going to need three minutes to present my case here and give you a little history about myself. So I, I'm a Phil. No, 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 excuse me. I, at point of order. I mean, the motion is to hold, so the comment should be on holding it. Uh, anything else should be taken up when it shows up at those various commissions. And yeah, but I, but I think it's important that the, the, the council here understands that I was never informed that there was any of this going on and I'm literally 10 feet away uh, from the applicant. And I appreciate so, that and, and your comments are not saying that your comments aren't valid, but the motion, if we were taking this item up, all your comments would be pertinent, but we're not taking this item up, we're holding it so that's what we should all be directing our comments to, even 
Alder so Scandal, open the Alder Scandal's round. comments are, are well well taken by the chair. So, Mr. Bartkowski, just you know, make your comments direct to the motion. Uh, well, uh, no, uh, that's not fine for ninety days. Well, Mr. Mayor, if I could, did Mr. Bartkowski have a a question? Perhaps your comments, Mr. Bartkowski would be related that you wouldn't want it held, that you would actually maybe want it approved or denied tonight, and then it would be quite appropriate to hear those comments. That's what I was hoping. Uh, All right, you're perfectly within your right and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So I'd be perfectly fine to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that would be my, uh, my preferred uh, uh, preference would be to be heard tonight and a vote tonight on this, because this yeah. is my third this is my third meeting. Uh, I, I've been with planning. I've been with variance, which kicked it. Do you have cool. the right to speak tonight, Mr. Bartikovsky? Um, just keep it to three minutes. Okay. And the, it was uh, it was punted to you from variance, and I was hoping we'd have some uh, uh, conclusion to this. I did. Uh, I was not notified of this. Uh, I didn't know until an hour ahead of the meeting at the planning commission that this was even going down i want everybody to understand this and be on record um i haven't had time to get an attorney but i did finally uh and he wasn't able to make it tonight but chris paul uh with metzler uh tim and uh travers i think that's how you pronounce it hopefully i didn't mess that up but i have pictures i wanted to submit tonight uh and i was told uh by chief of staff miss celestine jeffries that i could not submit them what that it was too late to submit those. And uh, so I have printed out stuff that I wanted to show you regarding this and showing you that there are certain spots with the, uh, uh, with the easement that is actually seven feet, nine inches wide, um, which I think is very relevant. I do have a letter. Uh, I do have a letter. I can read this to you, but I feel really rushed here. But I do have a letter uh, pertaining uh, um, an easement, Moyers and Malian, Dirtness Malian, uh, Gord Malian, Main Street. Are you aware we have had the property line between a survey, the four foot wide assessment, two feet on either side of the common line is for the benefit of both parties. Therefore, we'd like to see the four foot easement kept clear. We intend to exercise our rights to the easement and improve the site uh, and improve the side of the building and would appreciate anything in the easement removed by that day. And this was dated uh, August 5th, 1987. Uh, I realized that uh, something passed recently that easements uh, will go 40 years, well, from this date, and, it's, and I did request deeds requesting this as well. So I'm gonna need a little time before I get all of those and uh, negotiate things with my attorney. But I was hoping that I'd be able to uh, sufficiently uh, present this to you uh, this evening, and there would be a, a vote on this and uh, put to put to rest. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Your Honor, and the council members and uh, Chief of Staff. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any additional comments from the public? I, I, I have one for Mr. Bartkowski. A question. Go ahead, Alder. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bartkowski. Is it? Um, your concern centered around not having room to maintain or improve your building and maybe possible damage from cars going through there? Well, that's correct. I, I, do, have a, I do have a brick building uh, that was built in 1892. And uh, am I gonna stop his drive through when I put ladders up or a scissor lift to do tuck pointing in that area? Uh, uh, talking, you're talking a very small, narrow corridor there. Uh, the building is old, it's fragile. Um, it was built, like I said, in uh, 1892. I have, uh, I have uh, glass windows along those pictures I was going to show you, and hopefully I can present those. But I do have windows along the, the, the ground floor there that leads into the rock basement. I have a rock basement. This is a very old building that I'm restoring. I'm in the process of restoring that. I'm investing $40,000 into tuck pointing the outside. Uh, I've made many improvements to it. Um, yeah, I'm very concerned and it's extremely dangerous and tight there, especially the turn off to the left, which goes, and I have pictures to show you that, that's, uh, that's 7.9 inches right there. And on my truck that I drive is eight, eight feet wide. And, uh, 
uh, but yeah, I think I think it's going to inhibit a lot of my uh, improvement uh, of that building and maintaining it throughout the years. I appreciate it. I believe the applicant is also here tonight. Garrett, are you, Mr. Bader, are you here? I'm here, is it appropriate to speak right now? Yeah, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Per the original request to hold, things are changing in flu with this submittal, which is why what is being sought will probably change. Respectfully, any discussion on that is not really warranted at this time until we really know what's gonna happen there. Hence why the request for a 90 day delay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I ask um, Mr. Bader a question, please? Go ahead, Alder. Um, Mr. Bader, did you, you had a survey done, and I want to know how that survey was done, as I did see the plat for the properties, and according to, I did talk to David Buck, and he said that according to your survey, it shows that your property goes all the way up to the building, Mr. Budakowski's building. And if you look at the plat, that's not true. There's two, 2.43 feet to your property line, and then there's that uh, walking easement, two feet on Mr. Budakowski's lot and two feet on yours. So if you did look at that, th and that's, I mean, the commission did not see that, I believe, that was not presented, um, that pretty much Limit for your vehicles to go through that that um, on your property that leaves you less than eight feet, and I was told that a parking spot is eight feet. You know, sometimes opening your doors and eight feet. If you have another car trying to open their door, you have to let one one of you can only open your door at one time. So I want to know as now this has come to light that this would completely change your ideas for putting your drive through With all due respect, it does not change ideas, but there are other aspects that may change things. Hence, again, respectfully, it is prudent to wait until the issue is formally better understood until commenting further, hence why no action is being requested of me tonight. Thank you. Any other members of the public? I, Ocean to close the floor. Can I speak? I had my hand up. Oh. Who is you, you've made your comments, sir. We're going to close the floor. We don't have any additional speakers. Okay. Thank you. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Dorf. Second. Seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I sat in both at the Plan Commission and also at the Board of Appeals. Um, the Board of Appeals did not rule on it, and there were two conditional uses that were brought forward on this issue. One was for, for the fire department with safety issues, and the other was okay from the Board of Appeals. They declined to vote on this. They, they decided to hold off till their next Board of Appeals meeting. So, you know, in a sense, um, you know, both Mr. Bartikowski and Mr. Bader are correct in their stances, but I think, I think we need to look at it a little further. So, like I said, it'd be very easy to vote it down now, but a lot of us haven't had a chance to look at any minor changes or anything that have come forward since then. So, you know, I, I mean, I couldn't, I have a, my gut feeling how I want to vote, but I don't think it would be uh, done in, in the best of matters. So I, I think at this time, you know, we're just looking to bring, you know, delay this until we have the further information. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Thanks, Elder. Mayor Gainer, would you like to make a comment? Go ahead, Elder. 
uh, I think we should wait the 90 days. Uh, they haven't vetted this properly, and, and it sounds like they need the time to to regroup and, and, and get all the information properly addressed. So I, I recommend that we wait. We shouldn't rush this through. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any final comments on the motion? One last one. Yep, go ahead, Alder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, for myself, I've also you know, watched the meetings and read the material, and, and I went out to the property and, and walked it to see what it would look like visually. <clears throat> and uh, for me, I'm, I'm fine with not holding this and voting it down tonight. I can't see how, how this proposal would work. So that's just my opinion. I'm going to vote no, and then uh, hopefully vote through this uh, tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. We do have a motion and a second uh, to delay for 90 days unless the conditions are met sooner. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay? No. The ayes have it. No. Mayor, if I could have the record reflect that I need to abstain because Mr. Bader is a member of my executive committee. So, uh, so with that, the motion is successful and we're on to the finance committee. Motion approved to approve. Motion made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report Q, which is a report of the Finance Committee from the meeting on October 13, 2020. Any items to be handled separately? Six. Item six, any others? All right, hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it, the report has been approved with the exception of item six. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. The item was pulled by Alder Johnson. Alder, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I just, I wanted to have the opportunity to vote no on this. I voted no at the committee level. I want to do so here as well, largely in part because I do think that we received proposals from other qualified organizations um, at a lower rate. And I think it is, you know, trying to figure out how we can save money. Um, for, for fiscal reasons, I just wanted to have the opportunity to vote no on this. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Director Ellen Becker, you want to just address the Alder's comments? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, we went through a full RFP process for this um, for this bid um, for this for this service, and um, based on the numbers, before we saw any costs, um, the proposed. Winner, which is Baker Tilly, um, did come out with many more points when the costs got added. Um, they were the more expensive one, but in total, their total points came out and were the most qualified, um, had the highest points for after we went through the full RP. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Director, uh, yes, Alder Lefebvre, go ahead. Uh, yes, and this was discussed at the water utility, and they agreed that uh, Baker Tilly was the best. Um, because of these points. Okay. Thank you. Alder Dorf. Yes, and so there was certainly more to it than just the cost of, how, of what this would involve. Um, we are working with two other, what are the two, Diana, what are the two other agencies that if they come on board with us, it um, also was impacts... Um, Clifton Law Lawton, which is our CLA, which is our current vendor, and then there was also. No, I mean the two other agencies that were going to be audited. Oh, thank within you. I apologize. The... Yep, correct. Yeah. Um, Green Bay Water U uh, Utility and right. Green Bay Metro were also looking in our were in on the same bid. Correct. Right, and so and I understand why why um, Alder Johnson voted no. The rest, the other three of us voted yes, and we we did understand that there was a difference in cost and also in service and in reputation of, of the places that they had had more experience with a city of the size of ours. So that was a reason that I voted yes on it. So I wanted to ensure that the other elders who didn't get a chance to watch the meeting knew that there, there were two sides and I understand why Elder Johnson voted no and I wanted you to know why I voted yes. Thank you. Elder, any other comments? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second to award the contract. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Nay. The ayes have it, and the motion is successful. On to Park Committee. Motion to approve. Second. Second. 
made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Scandal to approve report R, which is the report of the Park Committee from the meeting on October 14, 2020. Any items to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. You guys have it. The report has been approved. Personnel. Motion approved. Made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Dorf. Any comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Was nay. The ayes have it. On to EDA. Motion to approve. Second. Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to approve report T, which is the report of the Economic Development Authority from the meeting on October 5th, 2020. Any comments? Abstain. Mr. Mr. Bader is on my executive committee. That is noted, Alder. Um, hearing no other comments, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to Committee of the Whole. Move to approve. Second. So we will let's take these one by one, Alder, though I appreciate the motion. Um, so item consideration with possible action on the request to fill the following replacement positions and all subsequent vacancies resulting from internal transfers. It's a custodian two and a building surf services coordinator. Any discussion on this item? Alder Galvin, go ahead. I'm just wondering why this thing come up in personnel. Yeah, very good question. Uh, we will go to Director Falls. I, I can actually answer that. Director um, Renier, wait, go ahead. Um, it, because they, they received the notices from these staff people the day of personnel committee. So we wouldn't have had time to properly notice it. And okay. these, are two, these are our two maintenance positions for our public housing units in Green Bay. So we will have no maintenance people after November 10th. So that's why we're trying to move these along quickly to fill these positions. Uh, all right, that, that satisfies me. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that item, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay, the ayes have it. The item has been approved. On to item U2, consideration with possible action on prohibiting weapons, including firearms, in any part of a building that is owned, occupied, or controlled by the city while being used for in-person polling locations and for central count. Move to approve. Second. Second. By Your Honor. Seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. And we, um, first we're gonna go to the clerk, Clerk Teske. Item is before us this evening. And then um, probably some subsequent comments from Chief Smith. Okay. Clerk Teske. So I brought this forward because I have been asked by some of the poll workers um, if we could not have any weapons or firearms in the polling locations on election day. And in, in order to make that prohibition, we received guidance from, was it WEC, Clerk Tusky? Yes, we did. Stating that the Common Council would need to adopt this resolution, correct? Correct. So that's why we have it before us tonight. Um, Chief Smith, any comments on the policy itself for us? The concerns that I've been hearing from members of the community are that they're, uh, that individuals might come from outside and try to disrupt the election or bring weapons to try and intimidate people from voting. During the August election, uh, I went to the various locations and I did go to the one, um, the Sears building that we were using down there on Mason Street. While I was there, I was approached by several poll workers who said they were in fear or intimidated earlier by an individual who had a, uh, a firearm open carried um, affixed to their waist. Um, I called the city attorney and asked if there was anything we could do in a situation like that. I was advised that because there was no ordinance, or nor a rule prohibiting people from carrying guns into that building, there was nothing we can do. So that was my experience. I know I have heard some concerns from people in the community that this is a very emotional and very contentious election. And um, I, that was evidence this morning when I went to City Hall and talked to some of the folks that were in line there. Uh, there were definitely some people that were very angry and very emotional in that line. So um, that's kind of the, 
perspective I have. Of course, it's entirely up to the city council to make this decision. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Mayor. Go to comments from council. Yeah, just remember to press your buttons. I'm monitoring that as closely as I can. Okay. Alder. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I think this is, this is a special situation. Um, people have a right, yes, as their second amendment with the firearms, but this is a special situation here with the polling. And as the uh, chief had mentioned and others, that this is a very volatile time. We've had people, well, just what happened to the Michigan uh, governor. People are getting so overwrought on this election that I'm just afraid, yes, that something might happen and that we need to put some kind of control on this. And I'm hoping that, um, I don't know if we will need the police at some of these polling stations. I don't know. This is becoming really scary. So I am definitely going to vote for this. Um, I don't, I, I'm not a, against people having their guns, but there's certain times when you don't need to have your gun. This is one of them. Thank you. Alder, Alder Scannell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm curious. We're looking at just restricting within a building. Uh, is there a reason why we didn't go for the property? I mean, I think if, uh, if we have people with weapons outside, uh, right outside the doors, that would be just as intense and why we're just saying restricted to within the building. Yeah, probably a question for law. So either Attorney Chavez or if Attorney Mather is on the call. This is Attorney Chavez. So there's a couple of reasons why we are unable to do that. So first and foremost, um, what the authority that we're granted by statute actually applies specifically to buildings. Um, the second component of that is parking lots, but what's ultimately determined is in reviewing different uh, laws and authorities pertaining to carry is that you have to still give people an option to be able to put weapons away somewhere so that they're not bringing it into the building. That's the main focus. So while there is definitely potential for concern for people being out on the ground. Um, we don't have the authority at this time under state statute to limit it to, uh, to limit the parking lots themselves um, or to limit grounds themselves either. Uh, and so what we're doing right now or what we're proposing right now is to address what authority is actually available to the city. Hey, thank you. That, that answers it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor, and, and uh, part of my question or concern was answered uh, with uh, uh, Alder Scannell's uh, question. Um, I guess my main concern is um, if we do vote in favor of this and it's restricted at the buildings, we're talking concealed or not concealed, is that correct? Correct. That is correct. All right. And then I guess I would ask that if this does pass, that we have uh, very visible signs outside of the entrances to all these buildings. Uh, that we do essays uh, to make it very obvious because there's some people that go uh, armed quite a bit and, and they may forget so I don't want anyone to run any problems um, but my I guess my concern is and this would probably be more for me Chavez because um, I've already talked to the chief about my concerns um, is that so from what you're saying is if someone wanted to go out and dress up with a tactical vest and and some kind of a long gun and all that other kind of stuff, nothing we can do to stop them from doing that. Is that correct? Um, it depends on what they're doing. So um, unauthorized militias are still prohibited by law and under the Constitution. And so if somebody is, is um, appearing as an unauthorized militia, that is definitely something we can, we can address uh, those existing laws. Now, if, if somebody is just wearing a tactical vest under something that looks normal um, um, available. But we do have intimidation factors that we are um, trying to work on containing as well. And so um, there is additional guidance that should be coming out from the WEC. Um, but the as far as prohibiting carry in the buildings themselves, this is the only way to do it. All right, because as I understood from an article that I read today, the only legal militia in the state of Wisconsin would be the National Guard. Anyone else identifying right. themselves as a militia would be in violation of state statute. 
except if someone's smart, they just say, oh, I'm, I'm not part of the militia. I'm just John Doe standing here with my tactical vest, helmet, and long gun. And if people are claiming that they feel intimidated by that, there's really, as I understand it, not much we could do. And we are waiting for additional guidance from the WEC um, to vote. All right. All right. I, I think that uh, addresses most of my concerns. And uh, I, I guess since I'm a poll worker, I'm, I'm even more concerned about this. Um, I, I guess part of my concern is if uh, someone does walk into the building armed, uh, are we setting up a procedure or something um, with what to do and how to handle it? Yes, as far as my understanding is, is that there are there is, the intention is to have something in place. That I would defer to the chief, but the um, recommendations that are coming out of the WEC are focused on providing something um, for people to to address that. Whether it's having um, non-uniformed officers in the vicinity or having um, somebody close by to, to address that. This way, it's not. Uh, an, an altercation. It doesn't escalate into an altercation. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. It's Alder. Alder Dorf. <clears throat> Thank you. I know that there are some people here from the public. I understand that there are that would like to speak. Would it be appropriate to open the floor at this time? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to move to open the floor. Second. Okay. Made to open the floor by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The floor is open. Uh, yes, Ms. Paulson, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the committee. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Paulson and I live at 2550 Martha Avenue, 54301. Um, thank you so much for putting together this resolution. I am the local group lead for Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America here in Green Bay. Um, and I think this is a really a really smart thing to do um, at this time when tensions are so high. Um, it won't solve everything, but I think it's a really good step in the right direction. Um, you know, we want to support creating a safe environment for democracy that allows anyone, um, regardless of their beliefs, to vote for the candidate of their choice without fear. And, you know, um, some people are perfectly fine with them, but some people really um, don't react well to open guns and um it's intimidating and if i were there with my son i'd probably just turn around and, and leave because it's such a um to me it's such a risky thing to have around um so i definitely support um prohibiting firearms at polling locations and um at government buildings on election day and um just for what it's worth if more guns made americans safer america I would be the tree on earth instead of having 100 people a day die um, from gun violence. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paulson. Uh, Ms. Ringel, please unmute yourself and uh, state your name and address again for the committee. Ms. Ringel. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I can't push buttons apparently. <clears throat> uh, Abby Ringel, 2042 Memorial Drive. I would just like to express my concerns um, that stating that we can't take our guns to a polling place actually makes me feel less safe as uh, a holder of my CCW. I carry that for protection. And as Chief Smith said, you know, there are individuals that you know are having guns and are very uptight about this election and are very passionate about it and if those individuals show up with their weapons and they decide to intimidate and ultimately draw their weapon on me I don't feel comfortable going to a voting place without being able to protect myself as is my first amendment right to to end in Wisconsin, we do have that right to open carry. So I would just like to express my concern there that, you know, I think we're opening, we're opening up a can of worms by saying that, especially since you can only limit it in a building and not on the property per se. So you're, you've got a whole can of worms that you're opening there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ringel. 
Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the committee about this matter? Uh, Teresa Kennedy, uh, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Hi, I'm Teresa Kennedy at 1301 Emily Street. And this really is just in response to the last caller, although I appreciate her point of view. I am a poll worker and uh, I feel if she feels unsafe standing in line outdoors because we can't, um, because as I understand from the earlier uh, discussion that we wouldn't be able to limit the carrying of weapons out, outside of the building, but only inside the building, then perhaps she should take advantage of uh, early voting uh, in person at her municipality's um, area. But again, as a poll worker, these, these uh, I, I'm already scared enough of COVID uh, of somebody becoming unhinged honestly, um, and perhaps taking out some frustrations inside a polling center. And that's really all I have to say. It sounds like um, a lot of the um, aldermen that have been commenting are in favor of this, and I appreciate that so much because protecting our right to vote is uh, the number one uh, reason why I have become a poll worker. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kennedy. Uh, Kelly. Thank you. Um, I have very mixed feelings on this for multiple reasons. I do open carry. Um, I did not start open carrying until this past summer when I was participating in some of the peaceful protests and the anger that came at our group. Um, I've never drawn my weapon. However, having it there has been a deterrent at times. Um, and so I guess I have very mixed feelings, especially with the parking lot and walking in and out of a polling place. I understand I, I do have the right to vote early in person However, I do have to agree with Ms. Ringle that I think it's opening a really big can of worms. Um, and it's not that those of us who open carry would necessarily become unhinged. We, I think, are more worried about those who are claiming to be patriots and showing up with long guns and the tactical vests. Those are the concerns um, that I have. So I feel for you with this decision because I think it's a double-edged sword in many ways. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Hutchison, if you'd like to uh, state your name and address for the committee. Sorry, for the I'm council. Denise. Yes. That's okay. I'm Denise Gummer Hutchison. I live at 3184 Hermans Road, uh, 54229. I am here tonight as a uh, poll worker, and I was actually at the Sears, the first person greeting people um, and welcoming them to the polling place in the August election. And I was also at the Sears, uh, excuse me, at um, West High School in April. And I have thought a lot about this because it was it was very uncomfortable to me when two different gentlemen came in with guns on their hips when they came in to vote. And um, it created a really uncomfortable energy for everybody working. And one of the gentlemen had to register to vote and he got rather agitated because there were some issues and he had to go back to his car and and it could have escalated it did not escalate except for he got a little angry and the work person working the registration was able to fill it and take care of it but we shouldn't be kinds of situations where we are fearful for our lives and we're fearful for the people coming to the polls and this is one day out of the year. And it is one, one day, not out of the year, but 
one time in our election process. And I would just encourage all of you to support the poll workers and support democracy and support people being able to come and feeling safe and secure when they come to their polling locations and knowing, and also those of us who are working those polling locations, that we are not going to be injured or hurt or potentially killed. And I'm also here as a member of the League of Women Voters who has worked over a hundred years to make sure that people have the right to vote, specifically women have the right to vote. And I would encourage you to take that into consideration that our minority communities and women have worked very hard to get to the point where it's okay to go and vote. And I don't wanna see anything hurt that opportunity to happen in this situation. So please vote to um, eliminate guns at the polling place on this election. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hutchison. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this issue? Please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Hi, my name is Christine Seidel. My address is 1222 Hastings Street. And I am a poll worker also. And I just want to alert to everyone to the fact that it is a felony to intimidate voters. And anyone who brings a weapon to a polling place is act actively intimidating voters. I can't think of any other reason why you would bring a weapon. I don't think that you go to vote and have to fear for your life. And I also think that the council should really consider the poll workers and what we are doing um, as a service to the community and to the nation. And I would really uh, want respect for our lives and also for the right to vote and all those people who are coming to vote. And I do think that if anyone has any sense about um, uh, being afraid to go to the poll place and they have to bring a gun in order to exercise their right to vote, that there are lots of ways to vote early and to take advantage of all of those opportunities to vote and and not feel that um, I, I really just don't think that we need to be in a position where we are um, having to fear for exercising our rights in this country in this democracy so thank you to the council for putting together this resolution i really really appreciate it thank you very much Thank you, Ms. Seidel. Anyone else wishing to speak to this issue, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. My name is Joyce Fritz, and I too am a poll worker. I live at 822 South Clay Street in Green Bay. And the polling place where I normally work is Union Congregational Church, and that polling place is not going to be used this time. But uh, that church has a sign on the door that says no guns are allowed. So we've already had that protection at a number of our polling places. And I urge you to uh, pass this resolution and give us that additional protection with the change of venues for many of the polling places. Um, I do not feel protected by a civilian with a gun. And I feel that poll workers and voters alike deserve to have that ease of guns not being allowed in the polling place. So thank you for proposing this resolution and I do urge you all to support it. Thank you, Ms. Fritz. Anyone else wishing to speak to this item, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Anyone else wishing to speak? My name is Luann Crowder. I live at 818 South Roosevelt Street. My husband, Jim Wall, and I are going to be city poll workers in November. 
It's difficult enough that voters are not required to wear masks, but the thought that they might also be armed with deadly weapons is chilling. In your considerations, please consider the safety of all concerned. A weapon that is not present cannot be used against anyone. This election is already so fraught with emotions. Please vote to ban weapons and keep voters and poll workers safe. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Crowder. Anyone else wishing to speak to this item, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the council. Anyone else? Okay, Mayor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Second. <clears throat> Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens to close the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Uh, Alder Brunette is in the queue. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I have questions for staff, um, just so they're ready. Uh, Clerk Teske, Chief Smith, and Attorney Chavez. First, for uh, Clerk Teske, you said poll workers have asked for this change. How many poll workers have asked for this uh, resolution be passed or something similar to it? I've had um, probably four um, that have either had arguments taking place like in August at the polling locations um, and they were concerned. I did have Denise um, contact me about a month ago and um, that's when I got the ball rolling with the city attorney. Um, and then um, some of the other workers um, have commented um, that they're worried about their safety. So um, it, probably more than four, because when I, I think of the safety question, I'm getting those now since the assignments have been sent out. Prior to the April, uh, August election, have we had any issues or concerns from poll workers or the general public about people carrying firearms, whether concealed or at their side? Yes, I've been, I've been questioned many times by poll workers, are they allowed to have guns and bring them in? And, and they do feel intimidated. How many times, I mean, just ballpark, like how many times per year does that come up? Every big election, the question comes up. Okay, thank, thank you, Clerk Teske. Uh, for Chief Smith, you uh, mentioned you were outside of City Hall when people were waiting in line, and you said that people were agitated, voters were agitated. What, what were they agitated about? Did they give any indication of what their grievances were? A couple things. One, uh, several people mentioned that they were agitated by having to wait in line. Uh, there was a period of time there, and early in the day they had a big crowd and they were agitated about that. But I heard some people make comments. Uh, one woman was agitated about it, and she specifically cited Clarence Thomas as the, uh, the culprit in whatever uh, issue she had with the court. So I would say it was that would be the type of uh, uh, interactions I had with folks out there. How many interactions? Um, I probably talked to 50 people out there and most of it was just a hello and others were concerned that uh, they weren't going to be able to, they were going to get a parking citation because they had to wait so long that they were parked at a meter and things of that nature. So um, I would say I probably talked to 50 people out there over the course of two or three visits to the polling location. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chief. Uh, Attorney Chavez, the if a person does not, perhaps this might be a question for Chief Smith, I don't know, but if a person does not comply, you know, they, they have a, a sidearm and, you know, holstered and they come in to vote and our officer or poll worker, whoever's at the door says, ma'am or sir, you cannot bring that in here. And if they refuse, then what? My suggestion I'm sorry, go ahead, testing. Or, no, I'm saying it's for you. 
Okay, from my perspective, uh, we'll have officers on duty. They'll be briefed on what to do. We'll have detectives that will be in plain clothes that'll be going between the different polling locations. If that does happen, we would ask that the, the uh, senior person at the poll contacts us through the um, 911 line uh, or one of our telephone lines and we'll send an officer over there to keep it more of an education thing I would suggest than anything else and our officers are really good at that they're trained at that and they excel at keeping the peace and getting voluntary compliance from people I don't anticipate making arrests or things of that nature okay thank you for that but I guess to, and I I have complete confidence in your officers on this chief I'm not discrediting them I'm just saying if we are painting this huge picture where everyone agree and oh my gosh, election day is going to be a disaster in our country and our community. I guess my fear would be if someone does, you know, show up with a firearm, one of the speakers said, why would a person want to bring a gun in? Well, we heard one person say for their own self-defense. So there are legitimate reasons why a person would want to carry as they vote. Um, but would we would we if a person just absolutely does not comply would we be issuing a citation because i don't see that a resolution has anything to that effect yeah, i would defer to uh, attorney chavez about what a city ordinance would be i believe it would just be a simple citation so this would actually be a um, statutory requirement um, so under state law if if we pro if we adopt to the resolution prohibiting it the only thing we have to do is post the, the signs um, and then it's a it's a violation of, of state statute huh. it's a violation of state statute what would the penalty be for violation i'd have to go find that out for you okay could we hold, i mean it is important because i do if we are anticipating some some really weird scenarios we have to anticipate this and uh, do you, how long will that take, it, sure, Attorney Chavez? Um, I have to do some research. You're going to have to give me a few minutes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mayor, it, well, I mean, so, uh, Attorney Chavez finds that you can, if there's any other speakers, I'm fine with. You know. We do have, uh, thank you, Alder. We do have Alders Dorf and Galvin in the queue. I don't have anything right now, Mayor. I guess I, I just forgot to turn that off when I opened the floor. Thank you. Bet. Alder Galvin? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would ask, and, and unfortunately, uh, Attorney Chavez is the one that could probably answer this. Is this ordinance going to be from now on uh, until we decide to rescind it in the future at some point in time? I mean, will it be good for 2021, 2022, any other election going forward? Resolutions stay in effect until they are um, un until another resolution changing things um, is adopted. Okay, and and if it doesn't pass and life goes back to normal next year, God willing, um, and we move our polling places back to where they used to be, then in the cases of say like the church that was mentioned that has posted no weapons, that would prevent voters from carrying weapons into that facility. Is is that correct? It's kind of a um, murky situation because private property owners are entitled to um, to do whatever they want as far as posting and prohibiting carry. When we have access to the buildings, it's kind of been a murky situation. So um, I don't have a solid answer for you on whether or not it would apply to all polling locations or um, just if it would apply to private locations that are being used as polling places um, or if it hmm, or if, if the requirement that it be a polling location trumps it okay and then I guess uh, uh, regardless of what the penalty is uh, which is what uh, Alder Burnett is getting at um, my concern is if uh, John Citizen walks into a location with a weapon and he's observed with it and he's asked to leave and he refuses and so we call the police department to show up um, if he refuses to leave 
my understanding would be that he would then be placed in custody and taken away. Um, whether he receives a citation or has to post bond in uh, some type of bond to uh, ensure that he would show up for court at a later date. But that's my understanding. Along in that. That's a question for the chief. Um, these would not be handled at the municipal level since it would be a violation of state law. And I think you're correct, sir. I think we would do everything we can to educate the person, to try and convince him that, uh, you know, this is a path that leads to, uh, you know, him being ultimately arrested. But if that were the case and somebody had to push it and was trying to make a point, then we would be able to, uh, you know, take that person into custody like we would for any other uh, violation like that. All right. Again, I'm an optimist and I hope it doesn't get there, but optimism is not a great, as you know, policing strategy. We have to be ready for things. So that we, we did run into a couple of incidents at my polling location uh, where we had a, a number of at-risk individuals that were using the building. We're, we were using two rooms out of a larger building. Uh, that building was uh, many individuals that were health-wise were at risk. We had two individuals without masks. And uh, there was one individual that made the statement, well, the sheriff's not gonna enforce the mask law anyway, so I'm refusing to leave and you can't stop me from voting. Um, luckily, the um, inspector um, did some real good verbal interaction with this individual, but it took almost 10 minutes to come to a resolution. And so I guess if we're gonna have people getting upset just about a mask, my concern is uh, we have individuals walking in with that same kind of attitude as it comes to their weapons how something like that could escalate. And so I just wanted to see what the, uh, was wondering what the end result would be if they ultimately did, did refine. I appreciate that answer, Chief. Thank you. Chief, it's, um, it looks like it's a class B forfeiture. Do you know what that would um, equate to as far as a fine goes? Yeah. If not, I can keep looking. I just thought you might go. Uh, while uh, it may or if I could have the floor back, while Attorney Chavez, I can kind of explain my, my reasoning is that it is tense. And in our country, in our community, uh, we need to come together as a community, as a people. And if there, ever there is a sign that we cannot allow politicians divide us and both sides, extreme sides. This is what is created now to the point that in this city, poll workers are afraid to work the polls to allow democracy to work. People have done this to us and maybe to some degree, we're all responsible as Americans that we allowed our hatred of each other get to this point on a partisan scale. And so it's really unfortunate. So now we have a situation where a person will come to exercise their vote, their, their right to vote for whatever reason they decide to have a firearm. Perhaps it's because they want some protection because of what we're painting this to be, this horrid situation where people are gonna, shooting, are gonna be shooting and intimidating each other. So a person will show up to vote with a firearm at their side, which is their right. And our police officers or our poll workers will ask them to leave. Perhaps they don't want to give up their firearm. Perhaps they don't want to leave. So now we are basically going to possibly arrest them and not allow them to vote because they do not want to comply with a resolution we're putting in place two weeks before the election when many people have voted already. I'm uneasy about it for a lot of reasons, not because I'm a gun nut, which I am certainly not, but I understand why people cling to their right to bear arms, especially in contentious times. Also not comfortable putting our officers in a very precarious position and highly tense situation across the entire city. I don't want to bring attention to this. I think if you pass something like this, especially two weeks before the election, no matter what your reason is, many valid reasons why many of you would vote yes, and I don't discredit or I don't argue with many of your points because they're valid. My point is we're gonna be bringing more attention to the situation. So now people may say, 
what in the world is the city of Green Bay doing now? They're going to deny us our right to bear, you know, a concealed carry or something open carry. That is our right. We've gone through classes and gone through all the per proper permitting and training classes to exercise that right. It's tough all the way around, right? But we cannot forget why this is. We're divided as a people and we deserve better from our leaders, from our community, from our politicians, our special interest. Every, everyone in America is, is responsible to some degree, I would argue. Whether either you are voicing this vitriol, posting comments on social media, the hatred that has been festering, I don't, I don't like it because of the real world applications we're all facing now. So I, I don't feel comfortable with passing the resolution as is. Attorney Chavez, if you have that number, that total, that's great. If not, then honestly, I don't think it would affect my decision at this point. It's a forfeiture of not to exceed 1,000. If the judge has discretion from one to one dollar to 1,000. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any further comments? Yep, I do. Go ahead, Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I could clarify with Attorney Chavez, there was some discussion with Alderman Burnett. Uh, we don't know if this uh, law will cover all polling locations or just those directly under our control, like the Sears. Or no. No, what I'm saying is that if what the question that got posed was whether or not um, if, if this didn't go through with the fact that private location had author had um, okay. posted no trust or no carry signs, okay. which is different. Than, if this goes through, yes, we absolutely have the right to prohibit. Okay. Carry Perfect. And that, that answers it. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Elder Burnett uh, brought up a few important points. I, I think this is just a, it's a feel good measure, unfortunately. Um, it's a solution looking for a problem. And really, as Alder Burnett stated, this could potentially create issues that would not have been there before. People who may have brought their, their side in with them to vote are not gonna know about this. They may not see the sign go in and all of a sudden they're being told they have to, they have to go back to the car and disarm. We're creating that situation. All right, I really this is for me, maybe not for others, I understand. This is irrational feelings versus constitutional rights. Do we get to take away a constitutional right because some people have these feelings that they can't get over? Um, it, it's a perceived protection, really, if you're putting a sign up. That doesn't mean there won't be guns in there. Come on now, we're smart folks, right? We're all adults. Putting a sign up does not mean there won't be guns in there. Bad guys and ladies don't care. They don't care. They don't turn around when they see the sign or hear there's an ordinance. They're going in to do whatever they're going to do. And for me, as a poll worker coming up here, I sure hope someone in the building has a concealed carry. You want some good people there who want to protect themselves and others with them. I don't want just bad people running around with guns, and that's what this does, potentially. And it's sending a loud signal right now. We are creating unsafe zones. It's shooting the flare up. We are putting out unsafe zones, just so we know. But it has a couple of those uh, those issues. And it's nice to see, I agree with Ms. Ringel, Ms. Delvo <laughs> on that item. So it's good to agree with them on something. Uh, we've been around for what, 160 years as a city. We've had contentious elections before. You cannot tell me this is the most contentious election because none of us have been around that long. I'm sure back in the 1800s, there was some issue that the farmers were all worked up about and the city folk and, you know, there, there have been tales of, of the Farmers coming in with their pitchforks to go after elected officials because they were going to be sent off to war. You know, there's been a lot of contention, and we haven't had these issues. Um, I think I've said just about everything I wanted to say. Um, I, I think also, and I think everybody probably realizes this as well, just using common sense, most, especially in winter, you don't know they're carrying. Ordinance or not, signs or not. And I'm just, <laughs> that's true. Same with bad guys. So I just think this is misguided. I, I don't think we need it. We haven't needed it. I, I think we can trust our people. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Thank you. So I know I do have something to say. 
um, first of all, a number of people, at least seven or eight emails, three texts, two poll workers contacted me today, all asking me to vote yes on this. I am on the elections committee, and part of being on the elections committee was to ensure that we have a good election. And an, a huge part of it was to support our poll workers and our clerk. And our clerk and our poll workers are asking for this and they will feel supported and they will feel safer and they will be more willing to work, then I don't think it's something that I would want to vote against. I definitely will vote for this. It's one day, it's five minutes maybe, or maybe an hour in a person's life. If the poll workers, and there are more than two or three or four, don't want weapons in the polling places, then I'm going to support them as a part of the elections committee and as an alder on the city council. Thank you. Alder, Alder Scannell. Alder Scannell. I'm, I'm clicking away here and nothing's happening. Um, first, before I, I take the floor, I've seen uh, Chris Teske trying to get in some uh, words advice. So if I, I defer to uh, let her speak before I speak. Yeah, you bet. Clerk Teske. Thank you, Alder Scannell. I just, this was brought forward not to start anything with the rights and everything. This is for the poll workers. We, we saw what happened in April when COVID came around. People didn't want to work because of COVID. Understandable. Now they're asking us you know, we want to feel safe and then we'll work. So the voters have a choice, many different choices to vote, different ways. For us to get poll workers, there's no choice. We either have them or we don't, and then people can't vote. So we are trying for the people that have stepped up to work in this pandemic now asking to just not have weapons because of the political atmosphere. This is for the poll workers. We aren't, this has nothing to do with you, you can carry, you can't carry. It's for the poll yeah, workers who are. To, what is the purpose? Um, Excuse so, me, just, the floor is closed and only uh, members of the committee or staff members can speak. Thank you. Please continue, Clerk Teske. So I, I just want to make that clear. It, it just has to do with the poll workers who have no choice but to sit there with people coming in. That's the only reason why this was brought forward. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question of the clerk? Uh, I'll... Really, you know, certainly. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'll just get No, you I, can take your question and then I'll speak. Okay. Go ahead. I think it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but did we ask all poll workers? Because I think we have, what, 300, 350 now, or did we just listen to four to seven? Because that really doesn't tell you much. I mean, if you would have asked everyone, I'm a poll worker and I would have told you I'm fine with it. So, and I could probably get you a dozen or more who said they'd be fine with it. So, telling us four to seven, eh, you know. Four, four to seven when I know that they are representing their team they're not all going to tell me like Denise I know that she was at two elections she worked with some of the same people it's not I didn't take a poll I, right. so I it's anecdotal it's just kind of you know maybe I, I just do you think a majority a simple majority can negate inalienable rights I think, think most of the poll workers. If majority can do away with constitutional rights just because they feel that it way. says, not, Alder Weary, you know that we did not have enough poll workers in April. Do you want to I have know. that same situation again? I know. I'm just saying, though, this is a right. We, we don't all. need to get into running, running back and forth here. Yep, yep. And I'd like to speak now. Alder Scandal. About that ahead. right. Hui. Let's hear this. Where's this argument on Packer game day when we had, when we could go into the stadium? Guns aren't allowed there. I don't hear all this righteous talk then. Courts, you can't bring a gun to court. There's plenty of places where this right is ends, and for safety reasons. 
and that a number of poll workers, uh, seven is fine by me. That's a good enough number. I think that's representative of many others. Let's say it's two dozen. That's a significant number. Uh, and I think it's probably bigger than that, but it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna get into the numbers. We know there's enough poll workers or some poll workers are concerned. I understand that concern. I appreciate that concern. I'm gonna support them. And all the arguments about gun rights is just a lot of blather, seriously. It, there, there are limitations. You act as if you can carry a gun no matter what, anytime, everything, you can't. And this is another instance where I believe it's appropriate and uh, for safety reasons where you can't. So I support this. I hope uh, we can move forward in a safe way, whatever happens. Uh, but I, I have no problem with telling gun rights activists, yes, you have the right, but it's not unlimited. You can't bring a gun into the Packer Stadium. Don't laugh at me. You can't bring a gun into the Packer Stadium. I'm try laughing it. at you, sorry. Try it, Alder Weary, try it. I'm laughing so, at you, I'm sorry. I'm done. Alder Weary, Alder. I can laugh. <laughs> I do have another comment if no one else has. Yeah, yeah, you can laugh. No, we've got I'm people. At him. Are you are you finished, Alder Scannell? Alder Lefebvre. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say that I'm voting for this. The reason is now I'm hearing that we have a poll workers. And it's probably more than just the uh, few that spoke up that have concerns and some are really nervous about this is issue. And remember we had some alders, I'm not gonna say who, were so upset with what happened in spring. And that's just because of the COVID that a lot of the poll workers backed out. I'm not gonna jeopardize that we, we're gonna end up going through some kind of fiasco again, like what happened in spring because we're gonna have poll workers who are gonna say, no, I'm not gonna come. If you're not gonna support us, we're not gonna show up. This could be more than you think. And we could end up being, again, where we're gonna have just one or two polling places and we're gonna have lines again, people standing in the cold. Who knows what the weather's gonna be like? Standing for hours. I'm voting for this, I'm sorry. This is something, come on. If you're a citizen, for Pete's sakes, come together and realize that for once, you don't have to have your weapon there. And as Alder Scannell, some other said, come on, there's other places where you cannot bring your gun in or any weapon. There's reasons for it. There's a reason here. And if we don't support our poll workers, I don't know what we're gonna do. Thank you. Alder, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to offer up an amendment and then I'll, I'll speak to it if it gets a second. Um, but, but I would uh, move that we amend the document and however legal would need to word it so that this particular resolution only applies to uh, the November 2020 election. Attorney Chavez. Um, you would just need to, well, we can't, we can, I can look at the language, but essentially it would just say for the 2020 um, election to be held on November 3rd. Okay, is there a second for that motion? I'll second it for a discussion. Okay. So, so I'm listening to the, the conversation on this and admittedly when I came into this I was I was on the fence about it and quite frankly I still do remain on the fence and one of the things that oftentimes when I listen to these arguments I you know I, I think I think both sides sometimes have a tendency to paint a more extreme picture than what's reality you know on one end I think you know it's it's being painted as people will be unsafe if they're allowed on the other end it's you know, we're, we're continuing to infringe on these, these rights and eventually we won't be able to have guns anymore. And I don't think, you know, either one of those extremes is really reality. And so I'm looking to see if we can find some middle ground here. Um, it, it seems to me that um, the issue that's come up is that tensions are high for this election. The number of poll workers have expressed concern for this election. Um, we wanna make sure that we have enough poll workers uh, this election and that we're not losing those again for this election. And so I, 
I have a, I, I'm always a little bit leery when we talk, talk about making semi-permanent or permanent policy changes based on anecdotes. And, and I don't know that there's been, you know, a, a real, a whole lot of information being presented to talk about risks or, or, or feedback that have been presented in the past. Um, and so I think if the middle ground here seems to me to address this election, and if we can do that successfully, we can ensure that we're not going to lose poll workers for this election. There's not a permanent change to the privilege that comes with those uh, or that comes with the state law that is currently in place. And so that, that's the purpose of the amendment. I think if the amendment were to be supported, um, I would have a tendency to uh, support, um, I would have a tendency to vote yes on this. Um, again, if it, if it were supported that it would apply just to this election. And if we feel the need then to revisit this for future elections, we have the ability to gather a little bit more information and, and have that dialogue uh, looking forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Comments on the amendment? Alder Corpus Dax, would you like to comment on the amendment? <laughs> I'll wait. Okay. Alder Galvin on the amendment. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. And this amendment with the other one, um, uh, everyone knows, retired police officer, and any time I uh, went on a call, uh, the less people with guns on that call, the safer I felt. Um, I never like to think that there was anyone, whether they had a legal right to carry a gun or an illegal right to carry a gun standing around me on a call. I felt unsafe because I don't know those people. I don't know why they have that gun. I don't know what they're thinking, what's on their mind, what's going on. And I've never met an officer that enjoyed having anyone around them with a weapon other than other officers. Um, I know that we're talking about poll workers here, but I did reference it, uh, Alder Johnson, that uh, you know, we can look at this down the road. If we want these same poll workers to stay with, uh, with this job, we're gonna be looking at this problem down down the road then. And as Alder, I mean, as uh, Attorney Chavez says, it's murky once we get back into the other uh, areas, whether some are posted and some aren't posted. I, I think I'd prefer something that's clean, um, that's long-term. Uh, I mean, if, if it's all we have, I'll support it, but I would prefer uh, having a, uh, uh, the original um, proposal go forward. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, we got a bunch of people with uh, their buttons pressed. I don't know if it's related to the amendment, however, so if you could make sure that you're pressed to speak on this item, <clears throat> this motion, I'd appreciate it. And we have Alder Dorf and Alder Scano. Nope. And I, I took it off. I also took mine off. Okay. Any others on the amendment? Okay, seeing no further debate, we have a motion and a second to identify November 3rd, 2020 as the election uh, upon which this resolution would apply. So seeing no further debate. All Please favor. Mayor. Uh, Mayor, one clarification. Yes, Attorney Chavez. Um, it should actually be for the um, November election rather than just the date of the election, the general election, um, because it should apply to all of the um, polling locations equally, which would include the early in-person voting. Okay. Those would be applying to November 2020 election. Uh, and Alder Johnson has requested boards. We will do that. A question, I said, I said. Okay. Uh, What's that, Alder? It, it, I'm, uh, I'm, Kind of on the fence with it. I second Alder Johnson's motion if I vote no per se. Missing some of those comments. Are you asking if yeah. you can second a motion and then vote against it? That's. I'm not hearing your comments, Alder. I don't know if that's just me or if you have a bad connection. Bad internet connection. Can you hear me now? Yes, it's better now. 
Yeah, that's that's you. You got my question correct, Mayor. I second the motion, but if I choose to vote against it, is that okay procedurally? I don't think that's. A problem. Or do I have to withdraw my second? I don't think that's a problem, Attorney Chavez. Uh, seconding a motion does not require you to, to vote in favor of it. Thank you. Okay, request has been uh, made to use the board, so we will do that. My board doesn't work. I'm going to say no. That fails seven to five. Now we have the original motion in front of us. Final comments on on the motion or on the item itself. Yep. Last comments. The older weird. Um, it just you know we really need to use common sense here because this problem must have really built up over 160 years. Boy, it must have just been just bubbling below the surface, and all of a sudden, bam! Now it's an issue. Um, let's, use, let's use common sense. Signs and laws stop the good guys, right? Those who want to obey the law and the sign will not care. Not the bad guys, though. So you're setting up a bad situation. All this does so some people can feel good. Think about that, please. I mean, it's just such common sense. All you're doing is it'll be a nice headline. And you can say, hey, we're not having weapons in there. Well, none that you know of. It, <laughs> it just really dumbfounds me how simple this is. <laughs> and you start, Elder, uh, Elder Scannell was right. When you do start whittling away at your rights, because you can always make an excuse for a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. I mean, you can always can. You can see in some states, California, New York, they've whittled down their gun rights and things like that to almost nothing. Well, you know, I, I'm going to vote no. I, I haven't heard a reason, a sound reason, that this will actually do anything except make it more unsafe. Thank you. Where are you? Uh, Alder Galvin. Here, Honor. Um, I've had uh, a total of... Uh, 13 people contact me on this ordinance, um, eight of them which live in my district. I'd say several of those are poll workers. All those people that have contacted me want uh, this ordinance in place. Um, and again, like I said, I'm a firm believer in less guns, less trouble, less problems. Uh, I can't trust the fact that someone went through a four hour classroom uh, training on construction in the state of Wisconsin is suddenly the person I want uh, pulling a trigger in, in a confrontation or trying to make a decision of who to shoot or who not to shoot or even though he's got his concealed carry it doesn't make him a good guy it could just make him a bad concealed carry it doesn't make the difference if they make a decision the wrong reason at the last second then I, I just think the more we can do to prevent guns in the polling places and to make people feel safer I think we should do that. I'm going to vote yes for this. Thank you. Elder, Elder Corpus Dax. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm going to support the ban uh, simply because we don't allow guns in City Hall. Early in-person voting occurs at City Hall. That should extend to all of the other polling locations. That's it. Any other comments? Actually, a point of order, carrying a sidearm at City Hall is allowed. We voted on that a number of years ago as part of the vote. It was a big discussion. You can carry at City Hall. Okay. I just pointed that out. Just, the band. You probably weren't aware of it. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alder. Any final comments? I'm seeing none. We have a motion and a second. All in favor. Use the board, Mayor. We use the board, Mayor? Yep, absolutely. Request has been made to use the board. Yes. The board, yes.
And that is uh, successful eight to four. On to receive and play. Motion to receive, receive and place on file. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to receive and place on file the building permit and municipal court reports for September 2020. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 The report has been received and placed on file. Resolutions. Motion to under suspension of the report. Warning. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolutions one through seven. Except for one and four. <laughs> oh, yes. So, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, how are those resolutions handed now, attorney, handled Attorney Chavez, the um, Velp Avenue and 901 Main? Those are the two um, plan commission items? Yes. So those ones would just um, be ignored at this point. They're on the agenda as action items, but if the other items have ultimately failed or, or been referred back, then those items should not be taken up. You can, re you can um, receive and place on file, but at this point, I would just recommend you skip them. Okay. So we will heed that advice and ignore those resolutions. So I'll entertain a, a motion to adopt resolutions two, three, five, six, and seven. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion made by all channel, seconded by Alder Dorf to suspend the rules <clears throat> and take up those items with one roll call. All vote by saying aye. 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 May. Yes, have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Mayor, Mayor, I think you said, uh, let's see, you said down to uh, number seven. You did not include number eight. Correct. We're going to have right, a, I, we're going to have a, a, a freestanding vote on that. Okay. Thank you. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Alder Dorf, to adopt. We will use the board. I will yes. I will yes. Resolutions two, three, five, six, seven. I will yes. I will yes. And those are successful 11 to 1. Alder Brunette intending to vote no there? Uh, a slippery finger, but I please change to yes if you could, Mayor. Okay. Yeah, we'll thank you. That. that is unanimous, 12 0. So we're on to resolution 8. Move to approve. Second. Motion Second. Made by board. Seconded by Alder Scannell. We will use the board. I vote yes. Deeds eight to four on to ordinances first reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to suspend the rules, take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to advance. <clears throat> Second. Motion to advance made by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder Stevens. Advance items one through four. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Have it. They have been advanced to final adoption. On to referral of petitions and communications. I have one. 
Um, I'm not sure if this goes to protection and policy or planning, but refer to staff to look at um, regulations regarding the current zoning code and, and drive through and pick up lanes and the necessity of bypass lanes and or mini boards. That should go to planning commission. Planning commission. Okay. Alder, any other communications? Alder Lefebvre. Yes, um, one I have written out, there's two that I have to check a couple things with um, that I can still submit them after the committee, I mean, after the uh, council. Um, this one here goes to parks. I'm asking parks to look at Farland Park's parking lot, which is on Eastman Avenue, and the location of the playground equipment and splash pads. As the parking lot is almost a block away, is causing people to park illegally in the 1500 block, block of uh, Smith Street, which is a dead end. <clears throat> Thanks, Alder. You have another communication? Uh, no, I have to wait. I gotta find out two more uh, things on them and I will uh, submit them uh, probably within a day or two. That's still accept acceptable, right? Yep. Okay, All thank right. you. Yeah. And and I will send this, I will type this out and send it to uh, Chris Teske. Okay, very good, thank you. Are there thank you. I have one, Mayor. Go ahead, I'll uh, uh, To the Traffic Commission, consideration with possible action on changing the speeding limit on Hillcrest. Thanks, all there. any others? Seeing no others, I'll entertain a motion to refer. Motion to refer, even though everybody could have done these tomorrow and then we wouldn't have to pay for them. Motion to refer. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. <laughs> you have a second? A uh, second, second, yes. <laughs> motion by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder <laughs> Dorf to refer all late petitions and communications to the proper authority. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. You guys have it. Petitions and communications have been referred. Adjourn well, motion to adjourn. Motion made by Alder Galvin. Second by Alder Skin. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. We're adjourned. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Good night.